Good afternoon all. Uh, I've got some envelopes here with electronics parts in them. So uh, should we open them up and take a look at what's inside and sort of talk about it and maybe even wire some things up? Yeah, let's do it. It's post bag. Right, let's start with this one. And it is solder paste. Well, there's not much written on here, is there? So, um, but I think I seem to remember buying uh, tin lead. So this is not lead free. This is very much leaded. Um, but I'm just wondering, yes, that's some sort of uh, seal, but how am I meant to push that down? There's no actual uh, plungery mechanism. Uh, could I use that? This is a, a till roll inner. No, that won't fit in there. I'm going to have to find something that will push down in there so that I can actually dispense some paste. Also, there doesn't appear to be a hole in the end there, so it looks like I'm going to have to cut a hole in the end. Now, it looks like at the business end of this solder paste, um, we've got some bubbles in there, so it looks like that sort of oil or something has, uh, maybe even flux actually, has separated out from the solder uh, powder. I suppose what this is, is just powdered solder mixed in with um, a sort of fluxy oil stuff. So I'm just wondering whether this could do with a bit of a, a mix up and how I would do that. Maybe I could take that um, orange thing out the end. It looks like it unscrews and kind of stir it a bit. I don't know, but yes, that's going to need uh, a hole punching in the end. So the solder paste is for my 8-bit computer project. <laughs> it's actually a bit sunny today which is really playing havoc with the camera. Um, yes, I want to solder surface mount uh, ICs down onto these little boards. Now, the ICs uh, that I actually intend to use are slightly wider than the pads on here, so I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing very well, but the idea is to just dab a bit of solder paste on each of these pads. I might do that by just dipping a cocktail stick in the end of that dispenser, rather than attempting to do the thing where you just run a line of paste there and it all sort of uh, capillaries up onto the pin. I think I'd rather dab it on the individual pads. And I've got some uh, chips here. Which ones were they? Yes, these ones here, which are the narrower ones. I can't remember what the uh, the names of them are now, but um, I might experiment with the narrower ones first, just to make sure that I get um, good melting of the solder and good sort of capillary action. Um, so that it all adheres and I get the right amounts on there and just do some practice runs with these because I've got a feeling these HCT138s I'm not going to use now. Um, so let's take a look at this solder paste on eBay, see where it came from, how much it was and all that stuff. So this item on eBay uh, is this, it's the Mechanic XGZ40, uh, 10 cubic centimetres of solder paste in a syringe. Uh, flux, ooh, tin, 63%, lead, 37%, 25-45U, whatever that means. This one um, shows a label on there. I'm not sure how useful that label would be, uh, actually even with a sort of security sticker on there. Well, I didn't get any of that, but yes, this is tin lead in a 63%, 37% uh, ratio. So this syringe was $2.63, free shipping, and came from Alice, 110, 1983, who, it says here, is currently away until February the 25th, and that, of course, is for Chinese New Year. Uh, maybe I could use this box spanner uh, to push down in there and act as a plunger to push some of this solder paste out. Alternatively, what I might do is just remove that end nozzle and wiggle my cocktail stick in there and then spread it around on the pads on my PCB. Okay, related item. This one may not seem related at first, but it is. Um, it's five pieces of MR11 uh, lamp holders. These are sort of made of ceramic. This here is probably mica. These feel like they're silicon or silicone uh, coated wires. So yeah, these are for uh, plugging in MR11 halogen lights. So here's the idea. Um, printed circuit board, MR16 lamp holder, 
MR16 lamp. Um, this one is 12 volts. What is it? 12 volts. Uh, is that 45 watts? No, 35 watts. Pifco. So that goes in there. 12 volts. And then I just simply hang this over the top of the board with the solder paste and the chip sort of stuck into it and hold it there for long enough for the whole thing to get extremely hot and for the solder paste to melt and so that it reflows. Now I've been watching YouTube and I've been looking at uh, various ways of doing sort of very low tech reflow. Uh, one guy had a, a halogen security light, 500 watt sort of thing you put on the front of your house and he'd converted it into a sort of, it was upside down, the face was facing down, converted it into a reflow, a mini reflow oven. Um, and I've seen people using just regular car headlight bulbs. Uh, yeah, so this sort of thing, this is an H7, um, but uh, there's also the H4, which is a sort of bigger thing. And I've just seen, you know, people just holding them literally above the chip just to make it get very hot. Um, and, you know, the solder melts and it reflows. Now, the only thing is, it may possibly be that the country that uh, this technique was used in is a very hot country. This is a very cold country, so whether I'd have to get the room very warm first to uh, make this reflow idea work at all. Mm, not sure. Now the other possibility that I've seen is people using um, a hot plate. Let's imagine this is a hot plate. It's actually not. It's a piece of black welding glass. But um, imagine this is an electric hot plate. You place the board on there and the chip on top of the board. Now the advantage there is that you could see the chip and the board. If I've got my um, halogen light over it I'm not going to be able to see it very well so it's going to be a bit of guesswork. But here, of course, you've got the heat coming up from underneath, so it's going to be coming up through the board. Uh, the board doesn't look like it's a very good conductor of heat. I suppose uh, some will travel up through these, um, well, these vias, these pads uh, that are double-sided. But um, yeah, that, that strikes me as um, a, a, an awkward thing because the heat has to get through the board. But equally, you're not directly heating these chips, which of course are black. If I'm hanging a very bright and hot lamp above, then uh, the chip's going to get very hot. Um, so, you know, which is better? The chip gets hot and the solder melts, or the board gets hot and the solder melts? I'm not entirely sure. But uh, yes, yeah, solder reflow, that's what these uh, lamp holders are for. Let's take a look at them on eBay. So here they are, uh, five pieces, or you can also buy 10 pieces. MR11, MR16, GU5.3, G4, wire connector halogen LED bulb holder base socket. Um, I bought five pieces. Oh, that's very cheap. 99 cents. Does not ship to the United Kingdom. Well, that's weird because they did when I bought them. Uh, and these came from Lins Bay. Actually, what I might do is put a link to um, an item that does ship to the United Kingdom. I wonder whether that says does not ship to the United Kingdom because the seller's away. Oh, I'm not sure. Okay, here's another one. Let's see what's in here. Legos, as the Americans would say. No, not Lego. Um, this is, these are very small, aren't they? Why are these so small? Oh, that's a bit of a Swiss, actually. Um, well, not a Swiss, just probably my not really looking at the listing very thoroughly. Yeah, these are the red bases for these little um, miniature five by five, in other words, 25 tie point uh, breadboards, which just sort of uh, have a friction push fit onto these bases. But these are <laughs> half size bases, or half the size of this yellow base, um, which I do believe you can still get the yellow bases. Um, so yeah, be aware that when you buy the red bases, they're not the full size ones. They're actually uh, half size. Uh, oh, weirdly. Oh no, that's if I do that. Yes, they're exactly half the size of the yellow bases. Mmm. Uh, yeah, Zong Yi. That's also Zong Yi. So yeah, same thing, but uh, <laughs> half the size. Right, yeah, so this is the one. Um, well, mini 25 tie point breadboard, proto board, ooh, soudure, what's one of them? Plus PCB adaptable. Well, this, of course, is the PCB adaptable, but um, you can see here that uh, they're also selling the 25 tie point um, 
breadboards as well. Um, the adapter boards are 99 cents each. I bought four. They are half the size of the yellow ones. Free shipping, and these ones came from DIY Electronic. Um, this seller is also away until February the 22nd, of course, Chinese New Year. Why wouldn't they be? It's their main holiday. And uh, let's do one more. Now, unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be anything in this post bag which I can actually connect up and make work because, well, I can't connect these up. These are, how many were there? Oh, yes, um, 50 of these little mini ferrite rings. Um, yeah, so you've seen my little jewel thief, um, which is not on because there's a lot of light coming through the window. And this one now has the LDR, which stops it coming on when there's light shining on it. So I have to uh, really very heavily block that to get the jewel thief to come on. So you've seen the jewel thief. Um, these are the little transformers I wound for that. And uh, you also saw the two little transformers I wound just to sort of have a play around with feeding a waveform in one side and uh, monitoring the output from the secondary on the other side. So yeah, these really are in order that I can build lots of jewel thieves. There's going to be lots of enameled copper wire winding. Yeah, so these are little um, sort of grey coloured. They're not uh, colour coded in any way. I still don't know really whether there's any um, sort of recognised colour coding scheme for the type of ferrite material that these things are made of. These are just grey. Uh, I think it's some sort of dust, isn't it, that's bonded into uh, this ferrite ring. You can see here that uh, the outside diameter is about, I know, seven or eight millimetres. I'm sure the eBay listing will uh, give us all the information we need on these. Um, yeah, so these are to build lots and lots of these jewel thieves, um, which have the LDR on them so that when there's light, they actually shut off. I'm having to shield that from the sun to get that to come on. Um, yeah, for my jewel thief based computer. And uh, yes, these are 50 pieces ferrite bead, eight millimeters by four millimeters by three millimeters. I think four is the inside diameter and three is the sort of thickness of the, uh, the well, the height, if you look at them like this. Yes, anyway, uh, toroid core coil inductor ring cables, filter ferrous, ferrite, uh, 50 pieces for $2.17, that's not bad, free shipping. And these came from eVision Tech, who uh, isn't away for Chinese New Year, it would seem. And so these are today's uh, post bag items. Unfortunately, none of them that I can actually power up and make work. And uh, a big thank, as always, to Patreon supporters. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter of this channel, then click this link here. Another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And if you're not subscribed to this channel and you'd like to be, then click this link here. Cheerio.